But there is, uh, you know, in my neck of the woods of artificial intelligence, there's a lot of trajectories one can imagine of creating very powerful beings, uh, the, the technology that's essentially, you know, you can call super intelligence that could achieve space exploration, all those kinds of things without consciousness, right? without something that to us humans looks like consciousness. And there, you know, there is a sad feeling I have that consciousness too, in terms of us being humble, is a thing we humans take too seriously. That it's, we think it's special just because we have it, but it could be a thing that's actually holding us back in some kind of way. May well be. So may well be. Uh, I should say something about AI because I do think it offers a very important um, uh, step into the future. Uh, if you look at the Old Testament, the Bible, there is this story about Noah's ark that mm -hmm. you might know about. Yes. Noah uh, knew about a great flood that is about to endanger all life on earth. So he decided to build an ark. And the Bible actually talks about specifically what the, the size of this ark was, what the dimensions were. Turns out it was quite similar to Oumuamua that we will discuss in a few minutes. But uh, at any event, he built this ark and he put animals on it so that they were saved from the great flood. Now, you can think about doing the same on Earth because there are risks for future catastrophes. Mm -hmm. You know, we could have the self-inflicted wounds that we were talking about like nuclear war, changing the climate, or there could be an asteroid impacting us, just like the dinosaurs died. You know, they, the dinosaurs didn't have science, astronomy, they couldn't have a warning system, but there was this big stone, big rock that approached them. <laughs> yeah. the, it must have been a beautiful sight. Yeah. <laughs> just when it was approaching, got very big and then smashed them, okay, yeah. and killed them. So um, you could have a catastrophe like that, or in a billion years, the sun will basically boil off all the oceans on Earth. And uh, uh, currently, all our eggs are in one basket, but we can spread them. It's sort of like uh, the printing press, if you think about it. The revolution that Gutenberg brought is there were very few copies of the Bible at the time, mm -hmm. and each of them was precious because it was handwritten. But once the printing press produced multiple copies, you know, if something bad happened to one of the copies, it wasn't a catastrophe, you know, it wasn't disaster because you had many more copies mm -hmm. that, and so if we have copies of life here on earth elsewhere, then we avoid the risk of it being eliminated by a single point breakdown, catastrophe. So the question is, can we build Noah's spaceship that will carry life as we know it? Now, you might think we have to put elephants and whales and birds on a big yeah. spaceship. But that's not true because all you need to know is the DNA making, the genetic making of these animals, put it on a computer system that has AI mm -hmm. plus a 3D printer so that this CubeSat, which is rather small, yeah. can go with this information to another planet and use the raw materials there to produce synthetic life. And uh, that would be a way of producing copies, just like the Gutenberg printing press. Yeah, and it doesn't have to be exact copies of the humans, it could just contain some basic elements of life and then have enough life on board that it could uh, reproduce the process of evolution on another place. Right. So I mean, that also makes you sad, of course, because it, uh, you confront the mortality of your own little precious consciousness and all your own memories and knowledge and all that That's stuff. That's right, but, but who cares? <laughs> I mean, we are not so I care about mine, right? And you care well, about yours. No, but. no, I actually don't. You know, if you look at the big, if you are an astronomer, one thing that you learn from the universe yeah. is to be modest because you are not so significant. Oh boy. I mean, yeah. think about it. All these emperors and kings that conquered a piece of land on earth and we're extremely proud. You know, you see these images uh, of uh, kings and emperors that, you know, usually are alpha males and yeah. they, they stand, you know, strong and um, they're very proud of themselves. But if you think about it, there are 10 to the power 20 planets like the Earth in the observable volume of the universe. And this view of conquering a piece of land and even conquering all of Earth is just like an ant hugging a single grain of sand on the landscape of a huge beach. That's not very impressive. So you can't be uh, arrogant. If you see the big picture, 
you have to be humble. You know, also we we are short lived. You know, we within a hundred years, that's it, right? So, th- what does it teach you? First, to be humble, modest. You never have significant powers relative to the big scheme of things. Yes. And second, you should appreciate every day that you live. 